Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, can we talk with Monique? Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like and subscribe, hit that little bell, and please, guys, give me thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you are interested in what I have to say. So, guys, this is part two of my commentary on the interview with a sociopath with anti personality disorder. And so, if you watch the first part one, um, you know that I gave my commentary. So what I'm going to do the same, I'll let some play and then I'll give the commentary, but please do me a favor. Please go over to special kids, special books by special kids. That is the YouTube platform. Subscribe there. And also if you'd like, I'm encouraging you to go over to a Patreon page entitled SBSK. This gentleman here did a wonderful interview. And when we benefit from, um, information like this, some ways we can do a support is just by even giving a dollar or what have you and go on over to that um, YouTube channel. He interviews um, uh, children with special needs and it's a really special different platform. But this interview here, guys, is for us who are in this community who have been affected by people with uh, personality disorders, who are sociopath, narcissists. Um, this is part two, the gentleman in the black shirt is Dashe and he is being interviewed. He admits that he had, he is a sociopath and he has anti-personality disorder and bipolar. And the gentleman in the blue shirt, which I don't know his name, but he did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. This is going to help a lot of people. He's the person that's being interviewed. So this is part two. Uh, let's listen in and then I'm going to come back with my commentary. Okay, guys. All right. We're going to roll the tape. Let's roll it. It's hard to kind of explain to someone that, you know, is in an emotional sense, in a romantic sense. You know, I'm not super connected. For me, it's a sense of duty and commitment. So I'm going to do things for you because you are who you are to me. Um, and But, you know, people they in relationships, you know. They want more. They want a little bit more from you. So it gets to the point where I'll basically put that mask on to make them happy. Um. Okay, guys. So this is really important, guys. This We got to learn from this, especially those of us who have been married in intimate relationships. Um, he's basically saying in a relationship, um, he's going to basically – you know, do what he has to do because you are what you are to me, a source of supply, basically. Um, but he said, usually in relationships, people want more. So he used this, the term that we know of in this community. He said, I'm going to have to put that mask on. He's going to have to pretend. So this is why some people can be in relationships with narcissists and sociopaths for a long time because they will do some of them will pay the bills and do certain things that they know they have to do because you are who you are to me meaning you're my social supply you're my wife or my husband um but you know because I know you need a little bit more I'll just put the mask on and pretend so guys some of us who've been in relationships these people are pretending all the way through there's nothing real about it it's all about putting a mask on Okay. And pretending. Okay. And this is from the mouth of a sociopath and a narcissist. And I'll get to the part when they talk about narcissism. All right. We're going to roll it again. Just listen. But I can't, I can't hold it up forever. So they, they find out that there are some, you know, inconsistencies there in terms of the emotions. Um, and when you're trying to get someone to see past the emotional aspect, and just look at it in the sense of, you know, how I look at it, you know, I, I'm committed to you. They don't really, it's hard to kind of explain that. People start to feel like, you know, they're inconsequential. It's not really me that matters. If I want to connect to someone. So basically he says that he puts that mask on in the relationship, but it does fall. That He can't keep the mask on forever. And then people starts to see inconsistencies and guys do you guys remember when we were in these relationships we would start to see inconsistencies and even just watching this video it brought back so much because I was like wait a minute you know um I remember a time personally when it was around the holidays and this person would 
buy things for me sometimes or bring me a gift but you could see there was real not ha no happiness and I all often remembered during the holidays was like the time that he was the most upset and angry and it's probably because everybody else was experiencing the Thanksgiving or certain holidays and he really couldn't uh, experience these things right so he would be the most angry I knew during the summer months he was the happiest or you know you know if you could call it happy but during those months you know it was just like okay here's a gift but it was really no real care about it you know what I mean so he basically said that okay let's fin let's hear him finish talking about him in relationships in romantically like I can't I don't like you the same way like you know how people like each other I don't feel any emotional attachment to that so in order to make someone comfortable and lack of emotional attachment um, you know I have to wear a mask like I have to remind myself um, to tell my family members I love them you know I have to remind myself to maintain the contact with my friends and things like that so guys this is so good because now we can see a lot of these relationships that we were in you could see he used the word mask so he said if he likes somebody he has to put a mask on um and you know try to do what he has to do um he has to remind himself to tell his family he loves them um he also talked about, you know, if it's a friend, he has to remind himself to call a friend. And I'm going to do an upload on friendships because this is something, this is how I knew another one of my friends, acquaintances, was a narcissist. Um, because just what he basically said and, and by the behavior and some of the stuff they'll tell you, uh, sometimes narcissists, a lot of times these people will tell on themselves. But the point where he made is that he has to tell himself to call his friends or there's no emotion there. Like, oh, let me go call my friend. I miss her. No, he has to go. Hmm. I guess I better call them because they're, you know, supposed to be my friend. Um, and so this was one of the ways I knew, you, you know, a lot of us will realize who our friends really are, um, you know, when we're dealing with them or whether or not they're narcissists or toxic individuals, just by some of the things he's talking about. But um, let's roll them once again. personality traits that will benefit you but then you also want to do things for them to keep those personality traits around because you know in the long run that's more beneficial than not having that person around exactly, exactly. it's almost like a math equation yeah i would say i would i would agree with that it kind of is like a math equation um so you know i would say uh, i would say there's definitely like anybody else some people i, I like a little bit more than others mm -hmm. of course so some people i would try a little bit harder Wow, guys. So basically, it's transactional. That's what, you know, the relationships that we have been in with these individuals, it has nothing to do with. He basically said, look, if I like you, um, if you have traits that um, the interviewer clarified, if you have traits that I like, then basically, you know, I will do what I have to do. Because if I see those traits benefit me, then I will, you know, change my behavior and try to kind of hook line and sinker you in and this is where the love bombing comes in because they're love bombing you because there's some traits that they see in you that could benefit them right so they have to try to capture you right they gotta try to get you to want to be with them or to enamor you um, that's why a lot of these relationships um, the narcissist will try to get you to go to bed with them very early on or it, you know, they'll love bomb you or constantly try to stay around you um, and get information from you or, you know, they come on strong. And a lot of times, sometimes they want to either capture you by having sex with you or um, 
what is the other thing that they do? They capture you by being trying to be intimate or, you know, just trying to be around you all the time. Um, you won't have any time aw- away from them or, you know, trying to give you things. I mean, just moving very, very fast. Right. They move very, very quickly because they got to They they see the shiny new toy. So they got to try to capture you. And um, yeah, look at his eye contact, though. See, he's looking, trying to understand. He's looking and reading. Look at those eyes. Child, this is a good interview. All right. Let's get back into it. say yes because you do you do have to be relatively careful um when you're dealing with someone who truly has an antisocial personality disorder Um, okay so he said that you have to it's transactional it's not a relationship guys and i know for a lot of us that might be hurtful for me now as you get through your healing journey and you heal you know, you'll be able to look back at this and be like, wow, but it, you learn from it. In the beginning, it, it's, it's going to hurt. But as time goes on, you like, you look at a person like this and then you realize that these people are really, really um, some individuals that their mind just is not working correctly. And it has more to do about them than it has to do about you. Um, so uh, let's take it back to the film. necessarily a thing where you're gonna be there's gonna be physical violence or you know you're gonna be hurt or anything like that but if that person doesn't have insight as to how their actions actually affect other people um i would say the likelihood for you know you being manipulated even if it's in a small way um is gonna be very high because most people with uh you know sociopathic tendencies they're not gonna always formulate super grand schemes to take advantage of people um sometimes it would just be you know i'm looking to get lunch today uh so let me manipulate this person over here so i can get ten dollars and go get wow Uh, guys so he basically said look yes you should be concerned about being involved with anybody like this because these people do not have insight as to how they can hurt you he says he um manipulates people it doesn't necessarily have to be on a grand scheme right so these people are manipulating people in little ways that you may not even think and when I look back at a few of the narcissists that were in my life I can see where they manipulated certain things that weren't even they weren't even big things but just little things um like one person um had pretended that they were sick And something in me was like, is this person carrying on and acting this way because they want some empathy or they just want to manipulate me and then get off the phone and laugh because I'm so concerned about them. And, you know, when they get off the phone and hang up the phone and be like, she's so stupid. I got her, you know. And um, I believe that that's what they did on several occasions, said that they were sick. They were on the phone hollering and screaming this grand, you know. Academy Award winning presence and I was like is there anything I can do can I help you oh you know and they were like you know they were loving it loving the attention but loving the fact that they were manipulating me I don't even believe anything was wrong with them to be honest with you now but yeah they can manipulate patient people patients they can manipulate people and he said basically um to see if they could get ten dollars out of you to see if they can just win You know, so it doesn't have to be this big, grandiose thing. It could be little silly things, but just the fact that they know that they can manipulate you, it feels like they are in control. It gives them power. It makes them feel good. Look at his face. Look, just how he's talking about it. You see how his eyes kind of lit up? You could see his face. You look at that. Wow. Okay, let's go back. The fact that you're talking so openly about all of this that means that you're not really concerned with wearing a mask anymore. No. No. So it's just, I've come to a point where it's just, I, I, I have to accept it that this is who I am. Um, you know, and trying to do much to do too much to change that is where I start seeing negative things come into play. Do you want to feel like a regular person? I would say I wanted to, 
at one point. Um, but I've kind of let go of that more so recently. I mean, it has been helping because I find that the more I try to fit in, um, the easier it becomes for me to do negative things, manipulate, you know, lie and become angry, you know, ridiculously angry. So he says, basically, you know, he knows that he is different. But the more that he tries to keep a mask on, the more he tries to manip- um, to um, be regular or normal, he becomes more, the negativity comes out in him. Because it, yeah, they have to try so hard. Just think of that. You know, it's frustrating. So um, he said they become, he's, he finds that when he's trying to behave like a normal person, or try to be normal, he becomes more manipulative. He lies more and he becomes what he terms ridiculously angry guys. So this is why these people are dangerous because sometimes we're, they're dealing with their own demons within them. He said ridiculously, like really, really angry guys. So like I said, these are the same people that can kill you and ride around in a car. These are the same people who can take a, a lie detector test and pass it and not break a sweat. So this is the reason why these people are toxic. We don't want no contact with them. We don't want to be around them. Let them deal with their issues on their own. I look, that's the way I feel. You know, I feel bad for you, boo-boo, but, you know, I got to protect me. And if you can't, you have no insight as to how you can hurt me and you can become ridiculously angry or outbursts or anything like that, mm -mm, I don't want no parts of you. Okay, let's go back to the tape. Not to go to jail. Pretty much. He don't really. I just feel like it just, it's just too much chaos that I'm putting out there in the world. Um, and that's really that's really it. I just feel like it's too much chaos. And that's logically, that's just not a good thing. Is that something you realize independently or did therapy help? Mm, I would say therapy definitely helped, helped me realize that uh, because... You know, speaking with my therapist for the for the two years, um, she she helped me realize that a lot a lot of the things I was doing was basically it was, it was all kind of self serving, um, and at a certain point you do have to gain a level of insight um, and realize that you know you're making your own life harder. What would you say to the people you've heard in the past? say I wouldn't even say that I hope you can forgive me I would say it's more so I hope you can forgive forgive yourself wow so guys see this this is where we're gonna learn where that you know how they don't give closure they don't apologize you know he said what would you say to a person in the past that you've heard or manipulated he he didn't say I'm sorry you see he said I would say it's more that not about forgiving me, forgive yourself. Not I'm sorry for what I did to you or I'm sorry for manipulating or hitting you or whatever. It's more about, hey, it ain't about me. You don't have to forgive me. See how they make it about themselves? You need to forgive yourself. So you will never get closure with these people. And look look at his face. He has almost like a smirk on his face. These people are not sad for about what they do. You know, he's not sad about what he's done. He's not any way remorseful. There's no remorse. He has a smirk on his face. Look at his face, guys. And look at his face. He's very serious. Like, well, what would you say to somebody? You know, it's, he would say, I say it's more so that I hope that they can forgive themselves than me. Lord, have mercy. You see? So these people have no remorse, even when they do it. What they do. You see, he had to think about it and pause. All right, let's get back to the, to the film. To the interview. say basically I won't say don't take it so personally don't but don't look at it like you know there's something wrong with you you know it it was something that was wrong with me basically is it still wrong with you um I struggle with it 
that's why you know I, I limit myself in certain situations. Do you view yourself as better than other people? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, but I do my. Yeah, <laughs> he's telling the truth. Bro is telling the truth there. He said, "Do you view yourself as being better than other people?" He said, "Yes." definitely like yeah i'm better than you are you serious so this is what guys these people this is what's inside of them i i, I appreciate his honesty because he's really telling the truth that right there he paused because it's like almost like he didn't want to say it but it's like yeah look at his face he is yes they feel that they are better than people they feel like that when they you know scout you out and prey on you so yeah all right let's get back to the interview my best to kind of combat that um because that comes from you know outsmarting people you get this sense of you know inflated sense of self um you know almost narcissistic i would say do you believe you're better than me uh-oh um I would say based off of my belief system, no. Okay. So he basically said, yes, he feels like he is better than other people. He feels like he's smarter, but he said that's based on him being able to outsmart people. And it gives him almost like a false sense of, 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 you know, a false sense of himself because all these years he's been able to outsmart and deceive and manipulate people. And so they learn this craft as they get older, they get better with it. So you go from a five-year-old sociopathic individual, maybe to a 30 year old, they've learned the craft. They've learned how to manipulate on the, on the regular. So it's no big deal for them. Okay. So now this is part where he's talking about his belief system child what belief system do you have oh the belief system that oh yeah that's it that they're better than everybody else that everybody else is foolish you know that they are smarter than everybody else and everybody else is stupid yeah that's their part of their belief system but i digress back to the interview um simply because of the work that you do um again not really an emotional thing it's just the work that you do um you know people benefit from it so what is your belief system um i just mm -hmm. certain things are right and certain things are wrong yep black and white thank you is that something you taught yourself or is that learned through therapy it was a combination it was a combination um because you know my therapist would help me she would help me navigate um through the confusion like i would come to her with certain problems like you know i said this to that person and they and they reacted to me like this why why did that happen? I don't understand. You know, I thought that I was emulating the best I could. Emulating. So it would be things like that. And she would teach me the difference um, between just emulating and exaggerating mm. versus um, trying to more so genuinely connect with people. And that's where, the, that's where the whole understanding, like we mentioned earlier, you know, someone told you that their grandmother passed. You know, you have to realize and you have to recognize that that can be a horrible event for people do you have any fear that once you share your diagnoses people will always be skeptical about you i mean that's not necessarily a fear it's it's a it's, it's a given for me it's a given i would say i'm more surprised when people uh don't judge it do you have any fears fears um i would say the fear of being inadequate um that's the main one um the guys this is important because you have to look at the words that he chooses. He asked him, does he have any fears? And fears could be of anything, of mice, of people. And pretty much he doesn't have any fear. They only fear being exposed usually and the fear of being inadequate. And like, I, like a lot of times, if you watch these videos, you can see a lot of these sociopaths, not most of them, inside, they're like little kids, wounded kids. And this is where those narcissistic injuries come in. Because when you leave them or they feel like you may say something to them and you don't even know that you've said something that 
they might be upset about or might be considered a narcissistic injury because that makes them feel inadequate. It makes them feel small. So pretty much the narcissist that I knew, one was like the only thing I that, that I remember them saying was like they feared um, – they f- d- being disrespected. He, they, they didn't like being disrespected pretty much or being embarrassed. See, they like, there's, there's certain things that they don't like. They don't like to be exposed to the public. They don't like embarrassment. They don't like to be exposed. And then as a result of being exposed, that makes them feel inadequate. Those are pretty much the only other thing. If other people know, or they become exposed and become embarrassed, they really don't fear pretty much anything else you know so um back to the back to the uh uh interview fear being mediocre um wow i don't wanna i don't wanna die feeling like i didn't do anything basically and that would be that's really my only fear Mm. wow how would you define inadequate um Just having no no benefit to the world, basically. Do you think most people are inadequate? <laughs> um. Wow. He asked him to describe inadequate, and he said basically being no benefit to the world. It's all about benefit. What can something do for them? And he said, and then the interviewer asked, do you think most people are inadequate? Well, look at his face, guys. Yes, he feels that most people are inadequate. Look at these facial expressions. This is going to help you because this is what these people are. So he can, that mask, he's, the, you know, he puts the mask on and off during this interview, but this is who he is. This is what they look at us and say, hey, this person look over there. I can get them and manipulate them. And when we hang up the phone and they ghost us or don't pick up the phone, this is what they're doing. They're laughing and smiling because they feel that we're inadequate, that we're not smart, that we're silly, we're stupid. See? So look at the look at it, look at this real close. I'm gonna go back to the interview now. I won't say most because there's quite a bit of people in the world. Um, and I haven't met most, but I would say, yeah, there, 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 you know, there's a good amount of people that I would say are inadequate. Is that why you're okay with manipulation? Because you view many people as inadequate? No, um, that's not the main reason. Um, even if I view the person as adequate and I'm able to still manipulate them, um, that's like bonus points. I mean, we're all self-motivated. Like, you know, we're... Wow. So he said, even if he doesn't view the person as inadequate, but he's able to manipulate them, he's like, that's even better because I don't think they're inadequate. You know, they're not somebody I would take as a narcissist, uh, as a supply or want to be in a close relationship with. But if I could still manipulate them, that makes me feel even better. Do you see how these people look at the smirk? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look at the face. Look at the smirk. Look at his eyes open up bright and wide. Wow. And look how he's looking. He's trying to understand, but this one is in his head like, ooh, those urges, that feeling, those sensations. Remember in part one, he talked about urges and sensations. So they just go, I mean, it's just, look, guys, I'll tell you what I think of this um, in the end. But look at the face. Look at his eyes. He looks so happy now when he's talking about, Oh, you know, I've manipulated someone who I don't think is inadequate, so that must make me better than them. Oh, boy. All right, let's get back to the interview. We're all, we're all a bit narcissist. We're all a bit, you know, we all are a bit, you know. But we're competent. Where does it way. go from the, the typical amount of narcissist, mm-hmm. the typical amount of self-driven mm-hmm. to, okay, you now have antisocial personality disorder? I can't speak to that. That would be Again, I would be like a person-to-person basis, you know, but it's, it's, it's a trait that we all have. In order for you to survive in the world, you have to be a bit narcissist. Everybody does things that are self-serving. Eating and drinking are self-serving. Um, you know, we're literally killing the planet with our eating habits, for example. Um, this is the part where he is 
projecting and making excuses. Like we all have, yes, all of us do have certain narcissistic tendencies, but all of us don't go out and manipulate and pathologically lie and hurt people. And, you know, we don't not have emotions. So this is where you see them making excuses. Oh, well, we're hurting the planet and we all have some self-serving tendencies. Something about what he was asking him made him feel uncomfortable or inadequate so here is where you can see the narcissist the sociopath making excuses so you can go back in your mind to where you were with the narcissist and they start making excuses that kind of throw you off so here he's talking about oh the planet we all eat bad you know and it's killing it what does that have to do with anything we all have self-serving tendencies um yes we all have to eat but everybody who's eating on the planet of something that may affect the planet is not going and hurting other people. You eating food and it hurting the planet has nothing to do with you being a sociopath and hurting people. One thing ain't got nothing to do with the other. But you see how they do? They kind of get you off the off the path. Right. And they make excuses mm -hmm. and start projecting and um, projecting. So let's get back to the interview. killing the planet with our transportation habits it's all every people do things that are self-serving so it's not inherently a uh, bad it's thing. not that bad as to be a sociopath the things that you're doing that are self-serving aren't resulting in negative outcomes for other people as well as yourself so what makes you care about having a negative impact on other people is that intrinsic no mm -mm. no nope. it's just it's just a matter of, you know, you're causing unnecessary problems for other people. And I look at it from a very logical perspective because, you know, a lot of things, a lot of trauma is passed down. So if I if I do something for, to you, for example, um, and you carry that throughout the rest of your life, I don't know if you have a wife or kids, um, but let's say you go on to have a wife and kids and now your trauma from the event that you had with me filters into that. Now your wife starts to get a level of trauma your kids start to get a level of trauma other people that um are close to you start to get to a level of trauma anyone you meet it's possible the same thing can happen so i look at it from that perspective it's not an emotional thing it's just it really is a logical thing guys this is something that is really scary because this dude right here is basically telling you in other words he knows i don't give a darn what some of these therapists out here tell you these people know look at his face look look at those expressions and i just stopped this um you know just to stop it but look he, they know those look point to his nose he knows what they're doing these people know what they're doing he basically said that he knows it's logical for him this is, ain't nothing there's nothing intrinsic there's nothing emotional it's all about the thought process these people their brains are always going and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking that's why a lot of them are into some of them are into drugs some of them are into um uh, deviancy some of them are into prostitution some of them are into they have addiction problems because if your mind is always going and going and going and always having to put on a mask and always having to manipulate it's not normal for our bodies right so they have to do something to medicate themselves a lot of times but look at him he basically said he knows what he's doing it's all logical and he knows that what he does to you if he induces trauma Listen to what he just said. He said, this young man here, the sociopath, the narcissist, he said, if he induces trauma, he knows that inevitably that you will take that trauma and it's going, and you, if you're married or not, he asked him, well, do you have them? I don't know if you have a wife or kids or whatever, but if you go home to your wife and kids, that trauma will, if you have trauma, you will, that person who's uh, in your life, will have trauma and that that trauma and if you have kids that trauma will impact those children and those children's trauma will impact whoever they're with they know what they're doing it's almost like a game to them i'll inflict trauma on you and even if i'm not with you basically what he's saying i know that trauma is going to impact you your kids your life look look at this person they know what they're doing it's a game to them that's why they're dangerous that's why we have to pick up our skills, guys, and stay the heck away from these people because they know that they're impacting, inflicting trauma on us. 
and they know that everybody else who we come in contact with that it, it will affect us some way a level in our life and they're happy for it look at his face does he look sad when he's saying that no they don't care but it's almost i'm gonna talk about me as a believer it's almost demonic who causes chaos who and who, who, what entity causes chaos? What entity likes to, you know, kill, steal, and destroy? You see what I'm saying? Honey, and for those who not believe us, just listen to the rest of the interview, okay? But, um, yeah, look at that face. He's proud of that. Look at him. Let's go back to the interview. I didn't quite understand why it was. I didn't feel the way regular people felt. Um, and I would also, I would often do things um, that would be, you know, categorized as sensation chasing. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, you, you would engage in illegal activities, for example, um, you know, and if you don't get caught, that's quite a rush, you know. Y'all, <laughs> that's why this interview, shout out again to that young man who did the interview, who interviewed him, because this is going to help a lot of people. It already has over a million views, guys, because there are people who are going to watch this, even the sociopaths and the psychopaths <laughs> and the narcissists are going to watch this too. But he is, look at the smirk on his face. Do you see that curl on his mouth? He is happy. Don't you see, did see his eyes light up? See that? So he basically just said that he um, gets joy out of manipulating people. I mean, it is just amazing. Let's go back. I want to play that again. I think it's important. I, I think it's that important to play it again. Hold on one minute. Regular people felt, um, and I would also, I would often do things um, that would be, you know, categorized as sensation chasing. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, you, you would engage in illegal activities, for example, um, you know, and if you don't get caught, that's quite a rush, you know, it's, it's quite a rush to not get caught. Okay. So basically he's saying that he sensation chases, which is supply chasing. Right. And so that could be illegal activities like getting high. Just what I was telling you, um, speaking to you about and saying a lot of these individuals, because they can't regulate their emotions, a lot of them have to self-medicate some way. So they'll do drugs. They'll be involved with crime. Um, he said illegal activities. That's why in part one, I don't know, he asked him, when was the last time you manipulated someone? And he's had to think back. He said a year ago. And I almost believe that the reason why this young man ended up in therapy I could be wrong was that he did something illegal because typically they don't get into therapy unless they get ready to go clank clank into jail or their spouse and their loved one is about to leave them so it doesn't he doesn't mention relationship now so I'm thinking he did something illegal and that's how he ended up in therapy point blank period um, and you could see the smirk on his face that he's like, if you do something wrong and you don't get caught, he said, it's even better for them. Do you see how their minds are? I'm sorry, it's twisted. It is twisted. And so you add a, a father and, and a, a, a empath and children in this mix. Oh, my God, it's a recipe for disaster. Look at his face. He's happy. So if they, that's why they're dangerous to be around because they're basically, he's basically saying, if I can get away with it, these are people who will murder you. And if they feel they can get away with it, they're happy with that. There was a person that I was dealing with. They had to go to anger management because of domestic abuse. And they basically was like, I don't even know why I'm going because it's not going to do any good. They knew that. They told me that. These people know who they are. You just don't know who they are and you, we don't sometimes know who we are ourselves, right? So in order for us to recognize these people, we have to know who we are and we have to know who ourselves are. But if you've been abused, manipulated, traumatized, 
it's hard for you to know who you are and dig in and notice who these people really are because they're putting masks on, right? But this is such a good interview. Let's get back to the interview. You know, I can't necessarily feel anything myself in a way. So it gave me a sense of power to know that I can control other people's feelings. Do you- oh, Lord, 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 Lord. But again, we can look at the face. Look at his face. See how it's like almost like he's he's thinking, studying, you know, asking a question. Look at his eyes. Look how he's looking at him. He's studying him. Oh, my gosh. And he was on the low low asking him if he had a, ki- a wife and kids. This is how subtle these people are as it relates to gathering data. So this is a youth. He's on YouTube. He has a huge following. But obviously on YouTube, he's not said who he is. He interviews people. But he in this interview was basically asking, well, I don't know if you have a wife and kids. This is how they low key gather intel. But also. He basically said it gives him a sense of power when he can lie and manipulate people. Okay. It gives them a sense of power. That's where they get the, because he said he, he can't intrinsically feel. So manipulation gives them power. It's sick. It's twisted. Really. But this is, this is a learning experience, guys. This guy is here, you know, giving us the T and the 411 on what these people do. And that's why it's just best just to run. That's what, what why they always talk about no contact. Because these people, and that's why if they hoover you and you go back in, they're mad because you have inflicted a narcissistic injury and they are going to make you pay. Mm-hmm. Because they'll feel inadequate. Right? Okay, let's go back. somebody in the future no no not not to the extent that i did it before at least um i could see myself doing it if i'm engaging in the business deal it might be beneficial for me to get you to raise that bottom line you know stuff like that if you know which is manipulation it's just now it might be the way that our collective minds have been Mm -hmm. trained through mainstream media Mm -hmm. but when you say that my first thought is that's what a manipulator would say. Should I ever lose that skepticism? Should the viewer ever lose that skepticism when interacting with somebody with antisocial personality disorder? You gotta, you gotta know. Like I said, the people that I've known, you know, I've, I've had my friends for in between 8 and 13 years, you know, 12, 13 years. So it's like they're not too concerned about that because, you know, they know, they basically, they know that, you know, this is, this is a relationship that's been pre-existing. The people that are close to me, I, I don't really do anything mm-hmm. to upset those people because that's not beneficial to me to upset the people. Wow. So he basically said, you know, should people, you know, continue to be um, uh, aware and, you know, be concerned about somebody with anti person anti somebody with his diagnosis anti-social personality disorder um and he basically said well you got to watch them that's bull um it's not about watching them at this point um and then he goes on to talk about he has been friends with people for 12 13 years and um he doesn't find it beneficial to himself to upset these people so um these narcissists these sociopaths they inflict they like to upset us they like to make us upset they like to do that but he has no benefit from doing that so he doesn't do it to them right but those people that are close to him or so he says I don't believe that because look at this smirk on his face I don't believe that because they are pathological liars as well I believe he continue, he manipulates them as well they just don't know it Right. So this is how you can have somebody in your life, guys. Now, when we look at it on the flip side, this is how you can have somebody in your life for 20, 30, eight years, 13 years. They'd be a sociopath and you really don't know. 
a friend because they're not living with you. But then this also shows you how um, you can be in a marriage with somebody or a relationship for a long time and you don't know. They just do things, um, you know, when it's beneficial for them. Right. So look at that smirk on his face again. I just want you guys to notice it and look at his face. He's serious, but this one is smirking. He's like in his mind, like, oh, yes. You know, if it's not beneficial for me, you know, I don't, you know, upset the people who are close to me. They know when they get us upset because they do it purposely. Okay, here we go again. People that are close to me. Were you or are you ever a risk to be violent? Um, if you cross certain lines, for sure, definitely. Um, I can get to a period where it's like I, I shut down, like say if, um, you know, we were to get into a heated argument and you're yelling and screaming, um, I'll probably just hit you. I won't talk too much. Um, what is that like? Guys. So can you see why I don't really have any, you know, it's sad that he's like this, but guess what? I ain't wasting no tears. I'm trying to get the heck away from you to the left, to the left. I'm getting in my car, putting my foot on the accelerator and driving away quickly. He said, "Is it should people be concerned about him harming them? Or and he said, yeah, if they get into a heated argument and, you know, he would probably and, and he, you know, feels like he's pressed, he will hit you. He said, I won't even say much. I'll just hit you. This is, he's serious. He's telling the truth. Look at the face. He said, I will just hit you. Now, do you see the difference in this? The eyes? Guys, like I said, I've watched this video 10 times. And I get glimpses of the people that were in my life. Look at the eyes. But the one, the picture, the frame I showed you before, how his eyes opened up when he was talking about manipulating people and feeling good. And this is like, yeah, if you mess with me, I'm going to jack you up and just knock knock the crap out of you. Mm -hmm. See that? All right, now. Blind for you, uh, um, I don't tolerate disrespect in any, any shape or form. Um, that's kind of the main thing that would get me angry the quickest. What do you perceive? Sure. Okay, so this brought me back to some of the people who are in my life. This person always said they hated um, that, you know, they would always talk about being disrespected and they don't like to be exposed or embarrassed. So it was either disrespect or embarrassment. That was the two things they always talked about. Um, and he's going to ask him what he perceives as disrespect. So here, let's see what his answer is. disregard for me basically um so kind of the same things that i would do to another person more or less you know but uh that's kind of like an ego thing which you know i i do i do work on so to him so now here we can look and see why they stalk the these narcissists and sociopaths they are they're on YouTube. They'll stalk you. They'll stalk your phone. This is one of the reasons why you have to be careful when you're making plans to leave them, especially if they've been violent before. Always consult the um, law enforcement and always reach out to agencies that can help you because clearly here, his idea of disrespect is disregard. If you disregard them, if you don't pay attention to them, if you don't do what they say, if you just leave, they will consider that disregard. Therefore, it's disrespect. Therefore, you're in the realms of them becoming violent. So that's why even if you um, leave, even if you're being abused and you, they know they're not treating you right, but if you leave, they consider that a narcissistic injury, a disregard, and thus that they will... It leads them to sometimes become violent or the other part is the stalking and the hoovering. So where they feel that they have to hoover you. So look at his face. Look at his face again. Mm -hmm. This means I'm going to have to hurt you. If you if I feel like you disregard me, or you don't pay no attention to me, then I then I feel so. Yeah. So inadequate. He used the words disregard. Um, what else? Disrespect. Mm hmm. 
but those are all he feels inadequate about himself because he can't function normally like a normal person. He does disrespect and it's like the pot calling the kettle black. You know, um, he's disrespecting somebody and he's disregarding that person's feelings and emotions. So basically, you know, all the things he's doing to somebody, he has a fear of that happening to them. Crazy. But let's go back. So I don't mean this with any disrespect, mm-hmm. but would it be correct to call you a hypocrite then? To call me a hypocrite? Um, yeah. I would say yeah, in a way. Um, and that's 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 exactly you know why you know I would want I want to work on my problems and uh, be more positive. That's why I try my to do best nothing. now to not manipulate people and lie to them and do things like that because I know that if somebody was to do it to me, yeah, you know, depending on again it depends on the context too. Um, it depends on what's actually at stake. You know, how would you explain what it is like to have your diagnoses? To somebody who has the typical range of emotions, um, I would compare it to that that first moment when you wake up in the morning and the world is kind of just an empty canvas and there's not much really happening yet, so you're just super neutral. That's really how I would I would describe it. How do you look at yourself? Um, I just look at myself as just pretty normal, pretty average, you know, um, I think the media kind of overly sensationalizes, um, you know, anti-social personality disorders in general, um, they make it seem like most of us are just murderers and we're just off the hinge with. Okay. So that was interesting how he described it of, um, when he wakes up in the morning cause he doesn't have emotions. Uh, when he wakes up in the morning, it's like a neutral uh, blank canvas. You know, that's how his life is. It's like a blank canvas, just super neutral, just all monotone colors, no greens and purples and blues, just super monotone. And then he says um, he's starting to describe um, antisocial personality disorder. You can see his face now. He doesn't like that word. He doesn't like the word sociopath. He really doesn't like the word antisocial personality disorder because he says the media, see, they're concerned about their appearance and how they look. But he said the news makes it seems that anybody with who has a sociopath and with antisocial personality disorder is a murderer. Well, some of you guys are. That's just the truth. I'm not sugarcoating it, but you can see, look at his face. It bothers him, right? He doesn't like that. He wants to be looked at in a good light. So his image and his appearance and how people view him is important, even though he doesn't care about anybody else. All right, let's get back to it. It's in some cases, rare cases, yeah, it can be true. But most people, um, that is because all, all mental health issues exist on the spectrum. So most people um, you're going to see that are going to exhibit these traits are going to be high functioning. Um, so you would... Uh, career fields like doctors, CEOs, lawyers, you typically see them engage in those fields because a lot of that stuff is logical. Okay, so you can see he doesn't want to be associated with the criminals and the murderers who are sociopaths. So he wants to categorize himself. Now, see his face has looked like it's lit up. And um, he wants to associate himself with doctors, lawyers, and CEOs because they're logical. So he said, basically, you'll see. Now, there's some truth to this. There, yes, a lot of narcissists, sociopaths, yes, they are in um, positions where they crave power. They're very competitive. But for him, you can see he doesn't like to be grouped into the, the arena with the murderers. He'd rather be grouped in with the, the people who are the lawyers, the CEOs, and the doctors, okay? So appearance for most of them, this is they don't ever want to be exposed. They don't ever want to be on that lower spectrum because, see, that's too low for him. I'd rather be a narcissistic, sociopath, psychopath with antisocial personality disorder and be a CEO and still hurt people, whatever, but I don't want to be the low-life murderer type. Child, please. All right, let's get back to the video. It's not really emotional. And the way you're dealing with people, again, is emotional-based. It's all logic. 
so you'll find you know people like me in those fields mm-hmm. are you proud of yourself for anything hmm. I mean I do you see so they have no sense of self-worth either you know, some of them are just hollow shells. He asked them, are you proud of yourself for anything? He couldn't say, well, I'm proud of myself for accomplishing this. Or I'm pr-. They don't, they can't regulate that. Look at his face. That's something hard for him to, he's not, no, they're not typically proud of themselves for anything. But they're happy when they manipulate people. That's where they get their joy from. So you can see he's struggling with that, 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 um, answer he's struggling see he really has like they can't self-reflect he's like uh what have i have i done anything that i should be proud for no he hasn't all right let's let's um see what his answer is i do have a sense of pride um i mean i would say i'm proud of myself for sitting here right now um because this isn't something that i would normally do I'm sure even people that I know um, and people in my family are going to watch this and they may be surprised um, to hear that, you know, I I do have certain issues. Um, What would you like to say to those who are close to you who are learning about this for the first time? Uh, Still me, you know. um, Hopefully they're not offended by anything that I say. You know, a lot of people that I, you know, I've only really... I've only actually told um, maybe maybe two people um, about it, um, and they have you know people typically have have adverse reactions to it because people start to feel like, oh you know well you don't care about me right you don't um, and that's not necessarily the case I just have my own way of going about it. What is the most important thing somebody can learn from this interview? Um, I would say I did this more so for people with, you know, antisocial personality disorder. I didn't necessarily do it for people that don't have it. That was interesting. He said he did the interview for people who have antisocial personality disorder, not for people who don't have it. So basically, he ain't doing it for the people, the victims, everybody else that's normal. He's doing it for them. But why? Like, I'm not understanding what. I, I don't get that that's strange because you would think see normal people would say well I'm doing it for people who have dealt with people with antisocial personality disorder and I'm just giving them some information so that they can understand what they were dealing with Mm-mm. child look at this okay let's go back um because I want I want people that suffer from it to go to go get the help oh, I want them okay. to learn how to use all those techniques that we use to lie, to manipulate, to hurt, use that to benefit people, you know, if you can. Because, you know, it, it just it has a collective effect. That's really how you have to look at it. You have to look at it in a logical way. It has a collective effect, um, and it makes your life more enjoyable. You know, people, people will be more so willing to, I guess, accept who you are. And again, it's not really an emotional thing. It just it makes it easier you to live life when you're not having to constantly hide and mm-hmm. you know lurk within the shadows what do you think when you wow so basically he said um he did it for the other sociopaths and people with antisocial personality disorder so that way they can um take all of those techniques and guys these are the words they use techniques so there must be multiple techniques they use to manipulate lie i mean all type of stuff they do which is you know just ridiculous that's why a lot of us come out with cognitive dissonance like what who does this they do it okay they do it this is what they do so look at this person really really long and hard and watch this video over and over i'm gonna put the link below to this page but yes this guy right here is showing you just what they do Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Let's go back to the interview. It's almost over, guys. Great interview, though. Do you hear the term sociopath? <laughs> um, regular person with less emotions, to be honest, um, because that's what really most people would be that they have antisocial personality uh, personality disorder. Um, it's just you know the sensations we feel. Um, we don't get a lot from the external world. 
Um, and then again, you know, everything is on the spectrum, so I can't necessarily speak to other people's experiences, but I know my own experience. That's how it is. What is it like to be you? 